We greet all of you tonight in the name of the Lord, those of you on live stream also. We have a number of our brothers and sisters tonight who are infirm of body and unable to be with us. Perhaps there are some of you watching that are in the same situation. We prayed for all of you tonight. And it's our desire that all of God's people prosper and be in good health as their soul prospers. We don't, we don't want to be casual about this. We prayed that uh, God's people everywhere will be a testimonial, living testimonial to the blessing of the Lord. Now we're continuing in the Gospel of John tonight. This will be our sixth lesson on it. We're going to be looking at the 14th verse of the first chapter. And I want to ever throughout this uh, series keep before you the reason for John writing that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and believing you might have life through his name. That's the that's the objective. When it comes to God's dealings with men, every, everything hinges on Christ. There are no direct dealings of God with you. It's through Amen. Christ and by the Holy Spirit and through faith. See, so there's no direct involvements that we have with God to a mediator and intercessor and so forth. Now John wrote, first of all, that, that we would believe that Jesus is the Christ. That is, he's the one that did what needed to be done. He's the, uh, he's the anointed one that did what needed to be done. And he is the one that's necessary for any productive relationships between men and God. It all focuses in the man, Christ Jesus. The fullness of the blessing is upon him. I don't think that this is commonly known. I mean, intellectually it may be acknowledged, but I I just don't hear enough about Christ these days and about Jesus. And that became a very per firm persuasion of mine that the nominal church, nominal means by name only, doesn't really have much understanding at all particularly of God and Christ, and that there's very little interest in either one of them, God or Christ. Maybe in an hour of crisis, something like that, but even then men resort to men of the world. So believing Jesus is the Christ, he's writing. This, he's the one everything hinges on. He's the one God has blessed and in whom all the fullness of the Godhead dwells bodily. And he, he's writing that we might believe he's the Son of God, that he is the representative of God. He's the only one in whom the fullness of the Godhead dwells bodily. The only way you can actually have any extensive knowledge of God is through Christ. He's the Son of God exclusive representative of him. As such, Jesus is primarily related to God, not to men. He's our Savior. He's God's Son. And Son is bigger than Savior. Son is more comprehensive than Savior. That doesn't diminish Savior, it just shows how great it is for him to be God's son. 
And as the Son of God, Jesus is the only one that can give us a proper and profitable explanation and understanding of God. You can't learn about God by study. Study's involved, but that's not where the learning, the learning doesn't come from your study. The learning comes from Christ. He's the only one that knows who the Father is. And he's willing to relate it to others. Brother, this is why the Apostle Paul prayed the prayers he did. That's right. And he wrote them down there in his letters to the believers in Ephesus and Colossians That's and right. Thessalonians. That's why he prayed this. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. Yeah. That's exactly right. He knows that nobody, no one can live for God who doesn't understand him. That's right. Now, this is not. This is not known. I mean, you'll be hard pressed to find a person that knows this, mm -hmm. yeah. confidently knows it. Mm -hmm. But it is it is knowable. Yeah. In my, my experience, there's a lot of people, a lot of teachers who talk about understanding the scriptures. Yeah. But few talk about understanding God. You're right. You're exactly right. It's a giveaway. See. Also, this is what this is why we have Christ. This is one of the big reasons why we have Christ. Not only did He take away the sins of the world, that cleared the way for Him to communicate this understanding of God to men. See, it's the Lord Jesus makes us alive and keeps us alive. Amen. That's involved in Him being the Christ and the Son of God. Christ suffered for our sins, not only to put sin away. but to ensure that we could know God. Yes, amen. Because it's through the knowledge of God that all things pertaining to life and godliness are given to us. It goes through this filter of the knowledge of God. And this, the knowledge of God, that's the means by which we escape yes. the pollutions of the world, amen. as Peter stated in 2 Peter 2.20. Men must, men must see this, that a lingering ignorance of things pertaining to life and godliness is a direct result of not knowing God. Yes. That, that's why, that's why, why it is. And there are some people that are in Christ that don't know God. Amen. Yeah. In the sense they could. That's right. Paul told the Corinthians, he said, there are some among you that have not the knowledge of God. That's right. And I'm saying this to your shame. Every church that has people in it that doesn't know God should be ashamed yeah. Amen. that that condition That's exists. Right. We don't want anyone to explain it to us and apologize for it, and it's indefensible. Yeah. I understand there's degrees, there's measures of which you can know God. I mean, I understand that you can grow in this, but everybody in the New Covenant, everyone knows God. <laughs> now then let's look at this uh, 14th verse it's a very uh, profound utterance and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory is of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth now the phrase, and we beheld his glory, the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, that's a parenthetical statement. Mm -hmm. So the sentence, the sentence reads this way, and the word of God is made flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Yeah. See, that, that's, yeah. that's the, the uh -huh. sentence that he right. said. Yeah. And the other says, we saw, we saw, we saw yeah. what was intended to be seen. So let's look at this text. This is uh, transcends human knowledge, but we can know something about it. Amen. The word, the word, mm -hmm. the word was made flesh. Now, some other versions read, 
The same word. All right, that's good. That's the word he just got through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Living Bible says Christ. That's dead wrong. The Amplified Bible says the word and puts in parentheses, Christ. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. Christ didn't become flesh. That's right. Yeah. The word did. Yeah. Amen. This refers to a person, as you know, uh -huh. is not a fiat or a saying. Saying. This is the one, the word whose goings forth are from old, even from everlasting. As scripture says. Micah 5 2. John has already taken us to the threshold of creation and said that the Word was with God and was God mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at that time. Yeah. There are some verses muddy the waters, particularly the Amplified Bible and the Living Bible. So let's let, let's let this be clear. That terms Jesus, Son, and Christ mm -hmm. refer to the humanity yeah. Yeah. of Christ, not to what he was before the world was. Uh -huh. Important to see this. Yes. These terms are thrown around too loosely. Uh -huh. The word wasn't, it was only when he became flesh yeah. that we had Jesus, yes. Son, mm -hmm. and Christ. Amen. He was made, the Word was made flesh. Not Christ was made flesh. Not Jesus was made flesh. Not Son of God was made flesh. The Word yeah. was made flesh. Some versions read this way. The Word became flesh or became human or became a human being or came became a man, became flesh and blood, and became flesh, human, Amplified Bible says. I just prefer it just like it says it here. The Word was made flesh. Some say flesh and blood. Well, that's, it's assumed. The idea here is that of the Word being made known or being revealed or brought into the vision of men. Yes. The word appeared yeah, amen. so he could be seen by men. Mm -hmm. And so he could participate in the human experience that would yeah. be necessary for his ministry. Mm -hmm. His character didn't change. Mm -hmm. His person didn't change. It's the form. Yeah, amen. He took a form, yeah, right. which was a change. Now the psalmist foretold this appearance, and the Spirit moved it to be written in the letter to the Hebrew believers that the word being revealed required a body. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Became flesh. Be required that he have a visible, tangible body, right. which he didn't have. Uh -huh. God in the Word didn't have a body. Yeah, that's right. They're both spirits. They have neither form. They don't have, they don't have that. They don't, they don't have a body like men have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know that people debate about this, but it doesn't make any difference whether they do or not. God is a spirit. That's Amen. what Jesus said. The psalmist wrote that the, of his entrance into the world, he said, a body hast thou prepared me, Psalm 10, 5. That, now, we're talking about when the word became flesh. Right. Yeah. A body has thou prepared me. This is quoted in Hebrews 10, 5, and is said to have occurred when he entered into the world. Wherefore, when he cometh into when he cometh into the world, it's important to get this word when it's happened. Yes, right. When he cometh into the world, he saith, "Sacrifice and offering thou wouldst not, but a body yeah. for sacrifice yeah. hast thou prepared me." Yeah. Amen. Now, unlike men, 
The word didn't come into the world at birth. He came in at conception. Well, you got to see this. He did it into the world when he was birthed. It's when he was conceived. That's when he came into the world. That's why the angel said to Mary, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, that holy thing which shall be born. See, he was already, already a holy being before he was born. Shall be called the Son of God. Other versions of the place of saying holy things. He had the holy one of the holy offspring or the one of the holy child developed in you. See, he was, that's when he entered the world. In that form, which is his as initial a form as you can get. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Talk about coming down. Yeah. World calls it a fetus. I don't like it. That doesn't have any personality. I don't like that. But that's right. to come dumb down uh-huh. from being in the form of God mm. and being equal with God to that Yes, there's humility for you. If you've been, God's asked you to come down. He didn't ask you to come that far. That's right. really coming down. Yeah, One might imagine that this remarkable condescension would make the word apparent to everybody, but it didn't. That's right. It didn't. It was in order that men might see, eventually see, but they, when they were able to see, they didn't, they didn't accept it. The world knew him not. His own received him not. You'd think that big of a condescension, he would be apparent to everybody, but he wasn't apparent to everybody. In fact, for a while, he wasn't apparent to anybody. See, the closer you get to the world, the more vague Jesus becomes. The more God condescends, the less he's seen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't come way down there when he's seen in creation. I come way down. Nobody saw it. Yeah. So what's that mean? Huh? People that bring the truth of God down are hiding it. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Not revealing yeah, that's it. Right. Uh-huh. That's why the people that hear this kind of thing are primarily ignorant. That, that's why. He didn't come down so he could be seen and known by people. He come down for the work he was going to do. Then secondarily, it was to be seen. What drove this requirement? This, this was a requirement. He had to come down, enter into the world, as flesh. Why? Every other birth has been in order to life. Every birth is in order to life. But Jesus' birth was in order to death. It wasn't in order that he might live, it's in order that he might die. That's right. And it's this is a revealed reason. Hebrews 10, 5, and 6. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, he's consenting now to the mission that he's been sent on, sacrifice an offering you did not desire. This is, this is never what God wanted. There were tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of offerings. This is never what God desired. That is, it didn't please him. It didn't meet his objective Sacrifice and offer you did not desire, but a body you prepared me. I'll give you. Yeah. I'll give you what you want. Amen. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. This didn't. This didn't address the need of humanity, mm-hmm. but this did introduce men to what it was going to take to save them. Yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yes. It was going to take more than just a word, mm-hmm. or some kind of miraculous work. Somebody from heaven couldn't be an angel because the angels weren't involved in being saved. 
Someone from heaven had to come down, consent to come down, and volunteer to die. Yeah. Oh, we're talking about deity here. Yeah. Amen. Yes. This matter of, of Christ, the, the word becoming flesh, mm. he, whenever he came into the world, he came the same way with the exception that he was born from above, yeah. mm -hmm. begotten of the Father, yeah. as as we all do. That's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it it was. Our life begins at conception. Amen. Yeah. But uh, and he became flesh mm -hmm. at conception. Amen. And the Holy Spirit overshadowed Amen. Mary. Mm -hmm. All right. So there's there's no experience of man that is not comprehended in the Christ, the Son of God. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing nothing outside of him. This this coming into the world as a man has to do with the cleansing of things that had been defiled by sin. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. And because that sin was I mean Satan had sinned, but it when Satan sinned, he didn't defile the world until he infected man with his mm. With, with his sin. It was whenever man sinned that the creation was defiled mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for man's sake. Now he was, he came into the world and it said of him, he cleansed things in heaven and in earth. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. So the, his humanity was necessary for that cleansing. There was no person born of man that was capable of producing that kind of cleansing Amen. because mm -hmm. they themselves were defiled. Amen. So a defiled thing can't clean anything That's inside. That's right. Amen. Whatever uh -huh. it touches, it defiles. If yeah. it was clean, it would be defiled after it Amen. Mm -hmm. See, for men to have life, life had to be forfeited yeah. uh -huh. by some someone. Amen. And it couldn't be another man. Uh -huh. Couldn't be an angel. Could be a cherubim, a seraphim, or an archangel. Yeah, that's right. Had to be another man. Mm -hmm. So the word had to become flesh. Yeah, amen. If we, if men were going to be uh -huh. saved. Uh -huh. That's to get that's a remark. Who can understand it? That's it's right. just too remarkable uh -huh. to understand. Uh -huh. and, and you can tell from what Sister June just said that Jesus was no ordinary man because if, if she's right, if, if you were, let's say you were holy, but if somebody that was defiled touched you, they would defile you. Yeah. But that didn't happen to Jesus. No, no. The woman with the issue, when she touched him, he said, virtue went out, but it didn't defile him. Yeah, you know? let, he touched him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yes. right. Yeah. yeah. See, he, was, he was holy. Amen. Right. Under the law, there was, there was only one thing, one sacrifice that had the power to remain clean and to impart cleansing. The, anything else, if something unholy touched it, mm -hmm. it became a defiled thing. Mm -hmm. It was unacceptable. Jesus was that one sacrifice yeah. that was not defiled Amen. personally mm -hmm. by Amen. the things that touched him and had power to impart Amen. acceptance and, and mm -hmm. holiness. Amen. Now, when, you, when you're familiar with the sacrifices of old and the sheer volume of them, which is mind-boggling, yeah. we're talking thousands, hundreds of thousands. There was, what, 20,000 sheep at the dedication of the temple, or I think it was more than that, as a matter of fact. Yeah. It was 100,000 sheep, 20,000 cattle. It was a just staggering number. Yeah. But it didn't make a difference if you offered one sheep or a hundred thousand sheep. It. That's right. The blood of bulls and goats could not take away Amen. sin. That's right. That was a dilemma. Uh -huh. No man could resolve that dilemma. That's right. Four thousand years was allotted to man. If they could come up with a solution that would address that, yeah. but they didn't. 
That's why the and the no no sin was ever found in Christ except the iniquity that was laid on him, which yeah. was ours. Uh -huh. That is all. Yeah, that's right. And I once uh, had a discussion not really that long ago with a man who was talking about Jesus being just like us and said he had all the childhood diseases and runny noses and that that we do. I said, you, what are you? You need to go to school or something. That is so dumb. Yeah. I'm surprised you said that. Disease is an aspect of death. Uh -huh. yeah. There can't be disease where people don't die. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. No, Jesus does not, wasn't like our youth we have today. Yeah. That having struggles with infirmity and youth. He wasn't that kind of kind of child at all. There was nothing found in him. Nothing, nothing at all. That's right. There was defiled or contaminated found in him. Mm -hmm. Alright, that's why the word became flesh and dwelt among us. It was to fulfill his commission to lay down his life and take it up again. All of his life was really a preparation for that work. Amen. Jesus didn't just come to show people how to live. Zechariah uh -huh. yeah. said Elizabeth could show you how to live. Yeah. Moses could show you how to live. Uh -huh. Noah could show you how to live. Uh -huh. That's not, he didn't come primarily to give us an example. Uh -huh. Although he did give us an yeah. example, we understand that, but yeah. he came primarily to lay down his life and take it up again yeah. in order that sin might be thoroughly and satisfactorily addressed. Amen. Just before he, his time to lay down his life came, he said this in John 12, 27, Now my soul is troubled, coming to this period of time when the iniquity of the world is going to be laid on him, and God's going to forsake him. Yeah. Now my soul is troubled. We have no idea mm -hmm. the right. depth right. of yeah. that. Right. And what shall I say? Mm -hmm. huh? What shall I say? Is this what I should say? Father, save me from this hour. Is that what I should say? For this cause came I unto this hour. Amen. That's right. See? That's part of the word, becoming flesh. Uh -huh. For the reason for the word becoming flesh is also stated in other words. Mm -hmm. For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, uh -huh. he also himself took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So that's another reason why yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. the word became flesh. So what a statement. The word yeah. was made flesh. Uh -huh. That is, it was a God caused this to happen. That's right. His life had such power mm. in these things that even when sin, human sin, all of human sin was laid upon him, he eliminated it. That's right. The power of his life removed power its end, power. Power of an endless life. Right? Yeah, yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Staggering thought. Yeah, amen. The word is made flesh and dwelt among us. Now when the Lord began his ministry, which followed his baptism in a 40-day temptation, it is written, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region around about, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. Now, in this particular phase of the Savior's life, this is where the dwelt applied. The dwelt didn't apply to when he was in Nazareth. He dwelt among... He was in the human race, I understand that, but that's not what he's talking about in this text. He dwelt among us. That's commenced with his ministry when he became a public figure. During that time he was made known to the people as a great light that had sprung up in Galilee. Now it's at this point he's dwelling among the people. Now, I want to emphasize that this refers to his ministry. 
among the people when Jesus no longer stayed with his parents in Nazareth. In fact, it is written, he left Nazareth and came and dwelt in Capernaum. That's when the, the dwelling among us began. As it is written, the people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them that sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. And that's when he began to preach. That's when he dwelt among us. <laughs> I want to work a little bit on this. This is why there's not much said about Jesus before he was 30. Aside from when he was 2 and when he was 12. Just Because there was apparently not nothing that was particularly distinctive about Christ up until that, mm -hmm. until he was 30. Yeah. People thought, well, this is the carpenter. Remember, mm -hmm. he's the son of Mary and Joseph. We know his brothers and sisters. See, he was, the light wasn't shining yet. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. We beheld him. This hadn't happened yet. When he was baptized by John in the River Jordan for the first time, the Holy Spirit descended in a bodily form, rested upon him, and a voice came from heaven, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Right there, the dwelling began. He entered in the womb he began this sanctified dwelling uh -huh. in his ministry yeah, yeah. when he began to preach. There's a reason why Jesus was made known in this manner. In the economy of redemption, Jesus was never intended to be known after the flesh. Amen. Now, had all the details of his first 30 years been spelled out, oh, yeah. see, it would have promoted mm -hmm. knowing Jesus according to the flesh. See, that's why that part is, was concealed. We do know he, he did turn up at the synagogue every Sabbath. That was his custom, but people just thought he was a fine young man, you know. Didn't think of him as a son of God or as a light of the world. They didn't, this is not how they thought about him at the time. In Nazareth, anyway, yeah, you right. can see their reaction. Yeah, that's right. their reaction to I was thinking that what, what you just said about them not knowing him after the flesh. We remember, well, we know we've had for hundreds of years what men do, religious men do, yeah. about certain places and things that they think was connected to him. Mm -hmm. They worship that thing. Yeah. Right. They yeah. don't that's serve right. him. Their that's attention right. is not turned to him. They turn to that thing. That's right. Same reason why God buried Moses. Yeah, that's Amen. right. Yeah. They, Amen. People would have worshipped Moses' dead body. Uh huh. I'm sure everybody can see that. He says this in 2 Corinthians 5.14. The love of Christ constraineth or compels or motivates us because we thus judge if one died for all, then we're all dead, that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth, that is from this point on, we know no man after the flesh, yea, though, though we have known Christ. After the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. So yeah. that's what he that's the result of him dwelling mm -hmm. among us, the result of his work. See, the gospels are all about Jesus after he started his ministry. Yes, that's right. His birth is recorded there. Mm -hmm. And his trip to the Passover feast at twelve is recorded. But the real content of Christ's life mm -hmm. began when he started ministry. Yes. Mm -hmm. It might interest you to know that that's when your life really begins yes. too. Yes. That's right. yeah. It begins when something starts flowing out. Amen. That's right. right? Yeah. He that believeth on me as the scripture said, out, mm -hmm. yeah. out that's right. of his belly shall flow living waters. That's how you will be made known, uh -huh, uh -huh. just as that's how Christ Amen. was made known. <clears throat>
Yes. Knowing them after the flesh, considering our relations with one another, the brethren, we know more about one another in the flesh because we dwell closely with mm. one another. And it's almost like because of that, there's more ammunition for the evil one That's to right. use mm-hmm. in our hearts That's against right. the brethren. Yes. And the, the fact that the Lord did not allow that for Jesus, there's no room for for Satan to use anything like that hmm. in the Amen. hearts of the Lord's people with, with Christ himself. Yeah. Yes. There'll be people in Christ that excel in the world. But they are not to be held in high esteem because of that. That's right, yeah. yeah. They're to be held in high regard as regards their ministry yes. for the Lord, what, Amen. how they contribute to the faith of God's people. Uh-huh. And on the flip side of that, there are those who have very humble means. They are not to be disregarded. That's right. That's right. Uh-huh. Amen. Down upon. Right. That's that. right. Amen. Well, something that we can see for ourselves from this too is that whenever, whenever there are those circumstances of the fleshly things being known about us, then we have to labor all the harder to make that not the focus. <laughs> yes. That That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Uh huh. Right. It seems you can't be around people and not get to know them a little bit. Mm-hmm. And we wouldn't say, well, I just I just don't want to know anything about anybody. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, God has put us in community. We're a yeah. body. We're going yeah. to know things about uh-huh. each other. But it's to be able to see each other yes, as sir. primarily brethren, uh-huh. the children of God. Uh-huh. And it, it, it changes how we interpret one another. It changes mm-hmm. how we... We yeah. uh, connect with one another. Uh-huh. We have the benefit of the other in mind, beneficial as far as mm-hmm. making it easier for them mm. uh, to receive grace and to have faith and to. It, it, our associations will be for good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. And if there, there's nobody that's dwelling in the body that doesn't have some weakness, but see, God uses even those things with us to mm-hmm. perfect each of us individually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we're learning wisdom and we're learning the mind of God concerning his people. We're learning to subdue our own flesh. We're, there are a lot of things being worked out in this. Mm-hmm. And so for somebody to just say, well, i got to stay away from everybody until it's church time because all I can do is, that's all I can know about them. Is Christ greater than the flesh? No, see, there's a beloved mm-hmm. physician. There's such a thing as a beloved physician. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's such a thing as that. What, a, what kind of patience the Lord must have had here to, you know, he tells us in Romans to wait on our ministry to, 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 to grow, and, but, but be ready to, to, to enter into it when the, when, when you, when the day start rises and you're, you're, you're prepared, you're ready. Yes, the do- Lord opens the door, ready. But he waited 30 years yeah. knowing full well what was up, up ahead, what was coming, but he endured. He was patient. Amen. Waited for that day. See, now here the, the dilemma has been created by the religious professionals uh-huh. is that the church as it presently exists is not set up for ministry. Uh-huh. That's right. Yeah. That's not even what it's there for. Mm-hmm. Some people think it's a ministry to the community while the people inside are starving uh-huh. to death. They think yeah. it's a but the church is, is a mutual yes, amen. faith and a mutual yes. ministry that takes place. But the modern church is not set up uh-huh. to do that kind of thing. Yes. Mm-hmm. See? And we'll be, you'll be considered odd if you do set up to do this, yes. as we per- perhaps know. We beheld, <laughs> he says, now he, he dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. We beheld his glory. The perversion say, we've seen his glory, we have beheld his glory, we saw his glory, we observed his glory, contemplated his glory, so forth. Well, when was that? We beheld his glory. Now it says when Jesus turned the water into wine, his first miracle, it said he manifested forth his glory. John 2.11. Is that what he's talking about? 
when he was talking to Martha about Lazarus, he said, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou wouldst see the glory of God? Is that what he's talking about? What's he talking about? We beheld John. We, we beheld his word. Is that, what the, is that what he's talking about? I'm saying no, that's not what he's talking about. John is referring to what he, Peter, and James saw on the Mount of Transfiguration. Yeah, that's, that's the glory he's talking right. about. Yeah. Yeah. When he's transfigured before them. Uh -huh. Shortly before his death, Peter, mm -hmm. he summoned up a single incident yeah. that he remembered mm -hmm. out of those more than three years he spent with Jesus. Yeah. Here's what he said. We were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory mm -hmm. when there came a voice to him from the most excellent glory. Yes. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Mm -hmm. That's the glory Amen. That's right. he's talking about yeah. here. Yeah. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. They saw at that point, what Jesus was within exuded yeah. uh -huh. out, yeah. became visible to the people. John said in his epistle, he said, we've, we've seen him and handled and touched him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the glory. Yeah. So we beheld his glory, the glories of the only begotten of the Father, full it's how, it's how we beheld him, yes. Before you leave that point there, completely, I think there's a, there's a veiled reference there. He, he dwelt among us, we beheld his glory. I think there's a veiled reference there to the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Remember there was the, yes, the, amen. the glory of the Shekinah glory yeah. of God came down. Yeah, the temple. Yeah, the mm -hmm. tabernacle. It's, it's like John saying Jesus is the real tabernacle amen. in amen. which the glory of God dwells. Mm -hmm. In fact, remember Jesus said, destroy this temple and I'll raise it in three right. days. And he's, he's talking about his body, his, mm -hmm. his mm -hmm. human flesh. The word became flesh. That was like a tabernacle. That Amen. was a true tabernacle. Amen. In which the old one was just a just a shadow. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Full. Full. Yeah. Yeah, what can you say about the only begotten of the Father? What will God uh, give to men through this glorified one now? Now he's glorified. What should men expect from Christ? What's accessible to them through Christ? The Spirit now is going to tell us. Nothing mediocre can proceed from him. Amen. So it's full of, see, nothing mediocre. Nothing mediocre, average, can come from Jesus. Whatever he has, he's abounding in it. Full, all right? Other versions say all the. I don't, I don't like that. Abounding in. All right, that's insufficient. Generous inside and out, the Message Bible. That, the meaning of the word translated full is filled up as opposed to empty, covered in every part of the soul, thoroughly permeated. There's no aspect of Jesus, this I'm going to tell you, full of grace and truth means there's no aspect of Jesus in which grace and truth are not found. Amen. He's full. Yeah. However you look at Christ, mm -hmm. look at him as the high priest, look at him as the intercessor, look at him as the son of God, look at him as the warrior. However you look at him, he's full Amen. of grace and truth. Mm -hmm. Whether he's by the seaside mm -hmm. or in the temple or in the synagogue or on a mountain or in a boat, he's full of grace and truth. Yeah. Whether he's being tempted by the devil, preaching and teaching, working miracles in Pilate's Hall or on the cross, mm -hmm. he's full yeah. of grace and truth. 
Whether he's answering a question, asking a question, making an observation, commending someone, or rebuking someone, he's full of grace and truth. In Jesus, grace never contradicts truth. Truth never contradicts grace. They work together. Well, let's look at this grace. You, you know by now that it's not that easy to define, <laughs> define grace. Some verses read kindness, full of kindness, full of unfailing love, loving forgiveness, gracious love, spiritual blessing, favor, blessing, grace, favor, loving kindness. See, that's just, I don't know why they just didn't tell us it's beyond explanation. The lexical or academic definition of grace is goodwill, loving kindness, favor. But see, that's not a very sad. You can't, definitions will never satisfy you. If you've, if you've kind of dealt with this, they may contribute. I'm not saying they're, they're utterly worthless, but they're not satisfying. Now, let's take this thing, grace. Now, grace is more than like an attitude, a divine attitude. That's what loving kindness, see? That's what it, it emphasizes, an attitude. But see, grace is more than an attitude. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna just name these. These are 24 things that grace is said to do. Yes. It's a divine enabler, causing an individual to be productive like Paul. Mm -hmm. I labor by the grace of God. He labored more abundantly than they all. Yes. It enabled people to believe. Mm -hmm. Acts 18:27. They believe through grace. Mm -hmm. It distributes to spiritual gifts. Every man is given grace, mm -hmm. according to the measure of faith. It enables one to live properly in the world. By grace, we have had our conversation in the yeah. world, Paul said. Grace saves sinners. By the grace of God, we shall be saved, even yeah. as others. It enables men to be justified. We're justified by grace through faith. It frees men from the dominion of sin. You're not under law, but under grace. Sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under law, but under grace. I'm telling you what grace does. Yeah. Jesus is full of this now, He's full of grace. It enables one to speak the truth. Romans 12, 3. It enables people to give beyond their means. Men and grace, the great God's grace enabled the people from Macedonia to give more than they had. Grace can enable you to have all sufficiency in all things that you may abound to every good work. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. It's sufficient to make a person able to glory in his infirmities. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. It can make people accepted in the beloved. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 1, 6. It gives redemption through Christ's blood, the forgiveness of sins. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 1, 7. It enables one to speak unto edification. Mm -hmm. Colossians 4, 6. It causes the name of Christ to be glorified in us. Mm -hmm. 2 Thessalonians 1, 12. It brings us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Yeah. 2 Thessalonians 2, 16. It is exceeding abundant with faith and love. 1 Timothy 1.14. It's an environment in which we can be strong. 2 Timothy 2.1. Be strong in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. It teaches us to deny ungodliness and morally lust, to live righteously, soberly, godly in this present world. It helps us in the time of need. Grace to help in the time of need. It enables us to serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Let's have grace that we may serve Him acceptably with reverence and godly fear. It establishes the heart. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 13, 9. It is an environment in which we stand. Yeah. The grace wherein ye stand. 1 Peter 5, 12. And it's an environment in which we grow. Grow in the grace yeah. and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, that's, now, Jesus is full of yeah. that kind of grace. Now, if that is so, that Jesus is full of grace, and that's what grace does, then we ought to expect to find these kind of benefits yeah. in abundant measure in his church. Amen. If he's full of grace, and this is what grace does, then this should be shown in his body, which is the church. If these things are missing, mm -hmm. grace isn't present. Yeah. And if grace isn't present, Jesus isn't present. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Now, this I understand this has some amazing implications, for, but people need to think about it. They need to think yeah. this out. Yeah. We've got a declaration from God. He was full of grace. And the church is the fullness of him that fills all in all. So God filled him up with grace and truth, and he fills the church up Amen. Yeah. with grace and truth. <laughs> and he's full of truth. He's full of truth. He's the son of God. He's full of grace, full of grace and truth. He's full of truth or reality, ultimate reality. Jesus said, I've come to, the, to bear witness to the truth. Mm -hmm. He's full of the truth. He said, the embodiment of truth is I am the truth. So he's the, he's the embodiment of truth. Yeah. This truth, when known, makes men free for the dominion of sin. You should know the truth. The truth will make you free. Right. It's the truth that sanctifies people. Mm -hmm. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 17, 19. Truth is to be obeyed. You obey the truth. It is the truth that is spoken in love, speaking the truth in love. In order to be saved, people must receive a love of the truth. So I'm showing you what truth does. He's full of truth. This is what truth does. God chooses men unto salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. God desires that all men come to the knowledge of the truth. The church is the pillar and ground of the truth, yeah. all right? If this is true, and it is, and Jesus is full of truth, mm -hmm. we should be seeing a lot of these things in the church. Yeah. Yeah. If the truth isn't seen in the church, then Jesus hasn't poured it. Mm -hmm. and the church is his fullness, the fullness of him that filled all of And Jesus hasn't poured it out. And if Jesus had to it out, it's because there's something between him and the people that prohibits that from happening. If people stagnate, they're not growing in Christ. I mean, we want to be sympathetic and all that. I'm not sure that's in order, but that contradicts that's right. the text we just read. Yes. We beheld his glory as what is full of grace and truth, full. Now the only way you'll know that he's full of grace and truth is if you get grace and truth. That's the only way you're gonna know this. Amen. And you'll not walk with the Lord alone until you find out I had no idea how much I could receive from Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. Until you're on the receiving end mm -hmm. and he's filling all in all, see, <laughs> and suddenly you're making it by leaps and bounds, you're yeah. seeing things, and what is that? That's grace and truth being poured out. Jesus yeah. is full of it. When he pours it out, he does, it doesn't diminish his supply. Mm -hmm. He's like that woman's bottle of oil. She filled up all the other bottles, and the bottle she's pouring out of still was full. That's the same way with Jesus. Yeah. He's still full of grace and truth, yeah. and he's been pouring it out now. For a couple thousand years, he's been pouring it out. Now the question, of course, becomes, are you on the receiving end? That, that's something you have to determine. Everybody has to determine, look, if this is true, this is how, I'm just sharing out how I think. If this is true, that Jesus' glory can be beheld and he's full of grace and truth, Whatever grace and truth do, mm -hmm. I want that to be done in me. Yeah, amen. Yes. Amen. And there's no uh, known limit to this. Yeah. Uh -huh. You can be full. Mm -hmm. And then if you're full, you can grow up and get a bigger yeah. capacity still. Amen. See? Do you see how much is in this? Yes. Amen. On this text here? And Jesus had to humble himself to be this, which is <laughs> what he is now is beyond our expectation, but he had to humble himself yeah. Yeah, that's right. to qualify to do this. Mm -hmm. yes. Otherwise, all this stuff would have stayed in heaven and never would have yeah. 
Who would have come to earth? He's not humble now. He's not humble now. He's been exalted, hasn't he? Yes, amen. Yeah. yes Brother Jason. Yeah, I think this full of grace and truth <coughs> has a couple of other references here in Scripture. Mm -hmm. One of them is, I don't think you mentioned this, but Colossians 2, 9. For in him the whole fullness yeah, bodily, yeah. of deity dwells bodily. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. in other words, Jesus is not some demigod. He's not That's some. Right. He's not some lesser deity. That's uh -huh. right. He's uh -huh. e everything. All of the divine attributes are found in Christ. That's mm -hmm. right. Amen. So he's not anything less. As far from his from from the standpoint of being deity, he's yeah. not anything less than the Father. Mm -hmm. Now, now he did humble himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we, so those divine attributes are actually seen in a human body. Yeah. And that made me think of um, when Moses. Remember, Moses asked to see the glory yeah. of God, mm -hmm. and God said, "Well, you can't, <coughs> you can't see that much of my glory. You won't live." <laughs> yeah. put, put him in the cleft of the rock, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. and it says the Lord passed by. And proclaim the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, mm -hmm. slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. There's grace, but who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the yeah. fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. There's truth. That's right. yeah. You can't get those two things together. Yeah, men can't get those two no. together. But you do in Christ. Here's, here's someone who is, he's gracious, like woman at the well, mm -hmm. yeah. woman caught in adultery, but he's truth. Mm -hmm. He's also truth. Yeah. So he speaks to the Pharisees, you brood yeah. of vipers. Mm -hmm. See, you can't get those two things in any other personality, and those are re those are reflections of the character of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's a, I believe I said that I appreciate you amplifying on it that there's nothing in God that cannot be found in Christ. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. Who was yes? Yeah, Jesus was full. It is. He is the truth. Yeah. He was full of truth and grace. You can't... He is the exclusive source of our apprehending the truth. Oh, amen. Uh -huh. yeah. you, know, you talked about Jesus in, in the days of his youth uh, not being prominent or being uh, mm -hmm. known as, as the Christ. This was... This was a protection for the work of God. Can you imagine if people knew at five years old that he was the Christ to be coming to him to be performing mm -hmm. miracles and they would mm -hmm. it would have see it wasn't his time. That's it right. His time. That's right. It was like he was right. hidden uh -huh. until his time. Yes. And God God is ever present. Is there is no place where God where God is not working. If if God's not there in some sense, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Because he created all things and by him all things consist and he upholds all things. And so it can't be unless God's involved somehow. Mm -hmm. And yet men men can be completely oblivious to it. Yes. Uh -huh. He's all around us and from one perspective. Yes. And mm -hmm. yet he can't be known or seen or perceived unless he makes himself known. Yeah. And that's what he did in Christ, Amen. is he made himself known. Yeah. And um, j just like whenever Jesus passed through the crowd, uh -huh. they he just passed through the crowd. They were looking for him. They were going to do him hurt. They were interested in where he was. Yeah. He just passed through them, yeah. and, and that was it. It wasn't his time yet, and he was hidden from them. Right yeah. in their presence, yeah. he was hidden Amen. from them. <laughs> Now this is this is where the assembly of God's people comes into play. It's in the assembly where there's a diversity of people with differing gifts and abilities that Jesus makes God known to a fuller measure. 
in this assembly through people into whom grace and truth have been poured by measure. See, when it comes to us, it's by measure. Jesus had it without measure. But this is this is what happens. You get Peter, you get Barnabas, you get James. You get them all together in one room talking about a problem and God pours out grace and they, they arrive at a solution. That's what happened. Yes, for the Judah. And you don't have truth. I was reminded of what Pilate said in Jesus' trial later in this gospel. And says, what is truth? What is truth? Mm. But you see, if you're not in Christ, then the, the entire concept of truth is foreign to you. But in the verse before that, Jesus says, To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Yeah. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Mm -hmm. That's what you were saying. In, in, in a right. nutshell, Jesus said it. That's if right. you have me, then you have the truth. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. That's still the way it is. Amen. Too. That's right. And you, and you said something earlier about it. Mm -hmm. um, you're talking about Jesus and the and the truth, but before he was the Christ, he was the Word. Mm -hmm. He he still was the one that proclaimed what could be known of God. He was the Word yes, of right. God. The expression, yeah. Uh huh. And so it. it the, I know I've said it before, but there are only two times whenever we that we know that something was was said that men could hear that didn't come directly through Christ or the word uh, by the mouth of an angel or whatever you know but it was still directed by the word and it was still be, it was because of the word mm -hmm. that these these things yeah. were made known whenever God uh, pronounced that he was his beloved son and when at his baptism, and then on the tra Mount of Transfiguration, mm -hmm. they heard the voice from the excellent mm -hmm. glory. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was because of the word. And apart from that, what do we know, tangible or intangible, about God that is not associated with the word or the word made flesh? That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Again. Yes. Um, where we're talking about Jesus being full of grace and truth, and that he's, he's the fullness of the God that dwells in him bodily. These are not just like theological positions. You know? yeah. <laughs> he, he, I was reminded, yeah. he says just a couple late, verses later here in John, that of his fullness we have yeah, all, all received. Him. And, and there in Colossians, when he talks about him being the fullness of the God in him bodily, what does he say right after that? And you are complete in him. Yeah. So that's, it's, that's, has a direct bearing upon us and our Amen. own experience. Yeah. Yeah. Receive grace for grace. So grace, yeah. what you receive, when you you barter with it too. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yes, brother Jason. Looking back on this this whole verse, it is quite a verse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the you know it's, it mentions the glory of God. Now, in the Old Testament scriptures, the glory of God was something that. It, it, you, you couldn't really be exposed to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, 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 when, when, it, when it came down the temple, remember Solomon built it, came down the temple, everybody had to get out. That's right, yeah. yeah. It, was a, it was a frightful thing. Oh, yeah. When, when God told the, you know, the Israelites he was going to come and dwell with them, that, that wasn't like, that was a fearful thing. Oh, yeah. And the glory of God, you didn't want to be too exposed to it. And even Moses said, show me your glory. And God said, well, I can't really do that. I'm, yeah. I'm going to show you a little bit. But see, it's like it's like God veiled himself in yeah. Christ. Yeah. Amen. He put, it's like so that so that we could be held. Because John says we beheld it. Yeah. We beheld his glory. Well, normally you can't do that. Yeah, it's veiled. Yeah. But in Christ you can. It's it, because he became flesh. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He, would, he is... He is to see in God what the veil was to Moses' face. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. He keeps us from the being destroyed by the glory. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But it's a, in Christ, we need to be clear, it's not, a, it's not like a real dim glory. 
And it's not a fading glory. See, Moses' glory, it faded. But the glory of Jesus doesn't fade. It's not a lesser glory. No. It's an uh -huh. accessible glory. That's, that's right. That's good. That's well uh -huh. said. Well said. Amen. It doesn't, well it doesn't said, like blow you away. Glory. Yeah. <laughs> that's God's graciousness, isn't it? To make his glory accessible. That, yes. If you wonder whether God cares for us, well, there you are. Amen. That confirms it. Yes. All right, we'll, we'll close there. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful expression of John 1.14. And we acknowledge, Lord, we just bow before you and say this is exceedingly great. And we feel like we've just seen the border of the land, but it is glorious. And we ask for grace to see more of this. It has a sanctifying effect upon the soul, upon our spirits. And we ask that you enable us to see more of this glory. In Jesus' name, amen.